Looks like Devin's going to six. Um, unbanning twin is something people have talked about for a long time since it got banned. Basically, like oh, yeah. you could. There was so the unbanned twin camp is divided into two groups of people. I feel like you're yelling. Group one are people that are reasonable and think that a twin unban would be healthy for modern because it suppresses some of these super linear decks that don't interact very well. Okay. The other group are just butthurt that their deck got banned. And can't pick up another deck. Like, for some reason, Twin was really polarizing and then it made people think that they were intellectually superior when they were playing it. Like, that was the <laughs> smart deck to play. Right. When in reality, like, it was a good deck, but it wasn't, like, the smart deck to play. Right. There were other decks that were equally as difficult to play, if not harder. Exactly. <clears throat> and it looks like Devin's in this one. Knee deep. What do you mean knee deep? He's kneeping. Oh, I get it. High five. All right. Devin's going to go all the way to 17 here. Devin is 17 for this turn one serum visions. Um, pretty important if he knows what he's playing against. Serum visions is a great way to keep yourself discard proof. So he's thinking about these cards. Bottom both is not a good sign. Um, so if you're Kyle, do you do you run out your Inquisition thoughtsies whatever here if he bottom yeah. both? Bottom both, a hundred percent. I just think you have to do it a hundred percent of the time anyway. No, if he goes one top, one bottom on turn one. Then I like waiting a turn. Oh, sure. Finds a stomping ground. Um, against, so if you see this, where he like plays the second land and then just passes, and you realize he's not on like some Delver shell or something that's like aggressive. Sure. Or tempo based. Then I like just slow rolling your discard to force through like a huge spell like a Liliana. Okay. Cause really uh, the the combo <laughs> is not the um is not what you're playing around. You're playing around the control elements of the deck. It's just that the combo happens to be the most efficient way, or was definitely for sure mm -hmm. uh, the most efficient way for them to end the game. Right. And you had to play around you had to play around the combo while playing around the, you know, both those factors, which uh, made it very difficult uh, for a lot Absolutely. of decks. Absolutely. So because it was like turn three into turn four, you could not take any turns off of respecting the combo. Right. Often it, the right play was to just like, all right, they could combo me and I just lose. But if they don't have the combo, then I'm in a hugely advantageous position now. Right. If they... If I go for it here and they combo me, I lose. But if I don't go for it here and they combo me, it doesn't matter. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't gain that much advantage by... Goyf down. Of note, Liliana in hand. Shields are down. Yeah, this Liliana's big one. So Liliana goes up to four here with a discard for everybody, uh, it, which puts her out of bolt range. Blue is a pretty decent color in modern. Like, it's not bad. You have, like, these Jeskai Nahiri decks, things like that. Grixis is strong. Yeah. There's some blue in the, People the just Eldrazi deck. Not really. People just want, like, tap out, or not tap out decks. They want, like, yeah, they want to Drago pass. decks. Right. Which is fine. Like, there's no Lord of playing like that, but... It's not great. All right. Planeswalker for Planeswalker. Oh, my. So this is an interesting matchup Chandra because... Torch of Defiance. Because the Chandra replaces a card. However, it makes you it makes you play the card proactively. 
Yeah. Um, but it, it can make up some of the card disadvantage that Liliana uh, generates. Absolutely. So that the plus one ability exiles that card, and then you can choose to cast it or not. Um, but having to, like, if you if you're Devin and you flip up Cryptic Command. Oh sure. You know you, you there's no good way to cast it. I guess you could bounce only on a draw card or something, but like. Tarmogoyf. How big is this bad boy? Tarmogoyf's got Planeswalker, Instant Sorcery, Land, and... Is there a creature? Four. Five. Right out of Chandra's range. Yep. This really puts the pressure on Devin to answer the Tarmogoyf here. He's got one card in hand. He's gonna get to see another one with the Torch of Defiance. If he chooses to, he may go... He could. Like, Electrolyze plus Chandra for the kill here. But Kyle also has a bolt, and with one red up, you got to respect that. Yeah, I don't know if if Devin sees Chandra as his path to victory, or just a way to uh, a way to continue to interact with Kyle's board. Okay, I mean, if he doesn't kill this Goyf, it's not going to interact with Kyle's board in any meaningful fashion. I I concur. I I would not see it as my path to victory. I would see it as a way to kill this Goyf, gain some card advantage. Sure. Um, produce a situation where Kyle has to has to answer it. So when you're playing against Jund, a repeatable source of card advantage is your path to victory a lot of times. Okay. Because they're going to be happy just one for wanting you. And if you have more cards than they do, then the one for ones don't matter as much. Right. So do you, you go to, you plus the, the Chandra here and, and hope for some burn? No, I mean, it depends on what's in my hand. So like snap into... Snap into anger. Okay. <clears throat> so you're Okay, you're snap two... into anger, and then Chandra's going to finish off the, the goyf here. Right. All right, so you've essentially taken a turn off to kill this goyf. Use your only card in hand. The goyf's exiled, so it still has the delay trigger from anger. Yeah, that goyf should be exiled. The, de the delayed replacement effect, whatever. So now Kyle's in tremendous position. Yeah, just the driver's seat the whole way here. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Chandra's not that great because uh, Devin went empty-handed there. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just don't see how you can not... Yep, all right, so now we have empty hand, empty hand, with Chandra at five. There's a little exchange there, but... Liliana at five. Liliana at five, I apologize. Top deck's the Kiki-Jiki. Man, That's an you awkward can just put it in play. Oh, it doesn't attack Lily. That's a misplay. Oh, yeah, that card has haste. So now Liliana goes down. It depends on what he drew. Yep. Yep, this is not where you want to be as yeah, Devin. Is that a Bob? Yep. Oh. Oh. All right, so Kyle, um, Kyle said discard a card. He didn't like you know read the whole uh, text of Collective Brutality. It's a duress, sure. not a thoughtseize. Um, and now Liliana's got this option here to. I think you still have to minus it. Okay. Look at the art on Collective Brutality, man. It's beautiful. Lots of deep, deep greens and reds in different parts of the card. Really moves the eye around. Um, 
the way the light is definitely centralized. Right, you've gone way too far. It's like one sentence too much about the art of collective brutality. I mean, you, only, you only get one. And you waste it on moves the eye around. I so didn't waste it. It was wasted. I think that's an important piece of, of art appreciation. Is where you want to look at any given moment. So All right, so Lily back on the draw go here. plan. Oh man, here's a seal of fire, and uh, we're just waiting on on Kyle to draw any threat, any Tarmogoyf, any raging ravine. Raging ravine would be a big one. Raging Ravine would be a nice place to be. We're four mana. Four mana. So I think we're on the cryptic bounce and draw? Nope. Oh, yeah. So if he just bounces, it just forces Kyle to tap out, and you discard this card that you drew. Yeah, so it's not like a huge... Yeah, it's not great. But it is good if Kyle decides to take a turn off. Right. I don't know why he's discarding these lands. I would just play the lands. Alright. It. This could get keeps... Devin back into the game if he's given enough time. That can get Kyle this game. Yeah, he's going to have greatness at any cost here. Devin needs an answer in fast. Oh, my. Yep. I think that answers all Devin's questions. You're just going to get some beat down. So, Lily's going to go up one last time here. And two. Let's play this goif. Mana leak your goif. Sure. <coughs> wow. So, in retrospect, Kyle should have plus Lily first. Absolutely. Uh, and it keeps the the coast clear for this goif coming down. There it is. All right, so ultimately, on it's gonna we're gonna separate the lands into two piles, and uh, Devin gets to keep one. He just always keeps the one that has three lands in it, right? Sure. So here it's it's interesting because he could have been playing lands all along, right? But the he was gaining an incremental advantage by keeping them in hand. He's gaining. Information. So, Kyle having information forces him to make the decision whether to keep, like, a spell in hand or force him to discard. If he just plays a land and Kyle draws something that he wants to keep, he right. can just take a turn off from plusing Lily. Okay. Alright. So, yeah, we're going to see... Man, gonna so see many two drops... Scavenging use keep Kyle alive through this uh, Dark Confidant activations triggers, really. I'm sorry, not activations. There's not going to be a whole lot more because this game is ending in quick order. Um. So, Exarch Eaton. So we've Two got Exarchs. some. Uh, we've got some criticism uh, on the fact that uh, instead of we're not play by playing the game all the way through, we're more commenting on what's going on in in the game. And uh, there's two ways you can call a game. You can call it like it's on the radio, or you can call it like like it's on the TV. Um, sure. A lot of people prefer to watch baseball. Uh, with the radio commentary, because it's more vivid. Yeah. Um, and they'll turn down their TVs, especially here in Cincinnati, where you've got uh, Marty Brenneman on the big one, 700 WLW. <laughs> and um, you're 700. But uh, we're choosing, instead of every play being called, to um, to just highlight what's happening in the game 
and uh, talk about you know th maybe the decisions that are being made. And uh, to that end, that's it's a it's a style choice. I find that a lot of times, uh, especially at this level, at the local level, it's hard to play as fast or to speak as fast as the plays are being made. Sure. And uh, and that's where I'm that's where I'm at on it. That's fair. Um, yeah, like we've stopped calling this game because Kyle pretty much once he had Dark Confidant Liliana uh, in play. Yeah, even though it was only in play for like a couple turns, it, it was like pretty much wrapped up. Like I, I mean, the the decisions Devin has to make are such that like we need to you know bolt the Dark Confidant as fast as possible. Sure. Um. So calling the play by play on that, it's a little like, eh. Doesn't really doesn't really excite me. Devin's gonna go to one here on this on this blocking scenario he's come up with. Pestermite chose to untap the land, which opens up mana leak for him, as well as any remands or probably remand, I would think. Anything like that. We saw mana leak earlier in the game. Absolutely, but I don't know if you'd wanna keep mana leak up when he's got five. Yeah, I mean I'm just saying it beats beats a blank. Sure. I don't know what he could have drawn here that gets him out of this hole. I just, I just don't think. Activating the uh, lighthouse. Uh, I just don't think uh, you can. I don't think you can call a game fast enough to actually call, like, talk about what's going on. In order to, uh, in order to like make it listen, like you know what I mean. You can't, you can't radio call Magic the Gathering. It just doesn't work. Sure. Um. I mean, there is some auctioneer somewhere. Yeah, that that literally knows the exact name of all the magic cards. Sure. Um, just fires it off. I mean, I'm an amateur. I'm not claiming to be a a, a pro at this, but I I mess up a name probably once a turn. Once a turn. Probably once a turn. Wow. Often. I don't know that I would mess up a name once a turn, but. Whoo. So this is interesting. How do you think Devin proceeds here? So, um, I th think he has a decent matchup here. He can't rely on the combo, but he's got the Ancestral Visions, and he's got the ability to interact at instant speed that makes playing against Jund uh, something you can definitely do. I don't know that he needs a ton of sideboard. Like, maybe adjust the levels of your removal. Um, like, electrolyze doesn't do a whole lot. Right. So cut those, bring in whatever you have that's decent. If he has Blood Moons, that could Man, be a plan. That would be a huge get if he had Blood Moon. Uh, for Kyle, though, you really just want to streamline your threats and your removal. Absolutely. He seems spread on, on threats. Like, I don't know how many Grim Flayers he's playing, but usually when you play Grim Flayer, you play four of them and you make that specific choice to, like... Sure. I'm going to I'm gonna get Delirium. Being on the draw, I like taking out the targeted discard. Uh, the Inquisitions or the Thoughtseizes or all of it? If I can take out all of it... That's, like, six spots, which is quite a bit. Yeah. But um, I guess Fulminator Mage is a pretty reasonable card. Yeah, I'm not excited about it, but it might just be an option. So when you're on the draw, you don't get to hit the turn one visions, which is like the whole reason to play the targeted discard okay. in this matchup. Sure. Like, I don't think he'll be able to take out six. That'd be pretty aggressive. Right. But he could take out like four. Yeah, and Thoughtseize doesn't do a whole like a whole lot more than Inquisition does. Like, you get your kiki-jiki, but uh, I think Kyle already has many, many answers to the combo. Sure. That he doesn't need discard to, like, back him up on it. Absolutely. And a lot of Jun players will run just a split of Terminates and Abrupt Decays. And maybe balancing that split to have more Abrupt Decays is something he would, would want to do if he's got that in the board. Sure. Um, do you think he needs to respond to the fact that Devin's got uh, the big four-mana Planeswalker in Chandra? 
it's definitely something to play around. But I don't think you can really do anything. Like you bring in a Maelstrom Pulse? If you have an extra one on the board? Yeah, usually they have a single Maelstrom Pulse in the main. Okay. I don't know that I would bring in a second one. You want to... So the whole point of Devin's deck is that he's able to interact at instant speed. Uh-huh. Like 90% of his deck. And Kyle needs to be able to respect and keep up with that to stay relevant in the game. Right. I know in the Grixis decks, the Haymaker against Jund is um, Karanos. Yeah, Karanos is pretty strong. Yeah, uh, It's a card Devin could have. I don't know if uh, he does. But it could be one to come in out of the board. Yeah, as a Jund player, like, a top deck Karanos is pretty scary. Right. <coughs> but it's just a, a good one to hit with, like, a Thoughtseize or something. And if you get a Lily online, then you're going to hit that Kyrnos before they can cast it. Sure. Turn 1 Serum Vision is a far cry from Turn 1 Ancestral Vision. Still not bad, though. Not bad. It's great at setting up your combo. Uh, not great at setting up card advantage, but... So, unlike uh, the Game 1, he top-topped both those cards from the Serum Visions. Sure. It looks like... Kyle has brought in Jun Charm. We got a second servant, so he got two of the cards that he wanted. Both of those are now in his hand. He might have kept his serum visions as one of them. I like that play. Give you maximum information if you know you're not gonna be doing anything on the first two turns. Sure. One up, one down. But it's pretty rough when so much of so many of Kyle's threats are gonna be two drops. So this is an operative turn here. So Jun Charm's a sideboard in card. This is a card that can break up the combo. It's an additional card to break up if he does it specifically with Pester Mites. Because they have one toughness. Well, because he has Kiki Jiki, it kills Kiki Jiki as well. So oh, it sure. breaks up the whole combo. All right. Answered Bob cleanly with Bolt. Let's see if Kyle drops another Bob or is content playing out this Goyf here. He's got the option for either one. But I don't know if he wants to run either of them into a counterspell. Goyf is only a 3-4 here? 1, 2, 3. Uh, I guess he'll be a 4-5 if he gets a land. Oh, man. Flash Freeze. Chose wrong. Flash Freeze counters a red or green spell, so it gets a lot of a lot Counter of the target, threats. not Bob. Right, gets a lot of the threats from John's deck there. Pithing Needle naming Lily. Sure. That is aggressive. There you go. This is how uh, this is how you're supposed to play these fetch lands. If Pithing Needle's on the stack, activate all your fetch lands. Sure, unless like you have a very specific card that you don't want it to name and you want to try to bait him into using or naming the fetch. Sure. <laughs> so we have named Lily. Uh, of note, you probably want to specify which Liliana you're naming because Jundex will run multiples. Liliana of the Veil. Right. So we've selected Liliana of the Veil. Okay. Alright, so. Let's see if he's got any other action here. Probably just passes. Just passes. Man, Grimflayer. Man, he gets all kinds of plays this turn. You can Grimflare and Bob. So he doesn't have Delirium. So this Grimflare is susceptible to Bolt. Right. There's Dark Confidant. We're just going to pass here. That's smart. 
If he plays the Grim Flare, he can, uh... He can wind up, uh, heavy and anger the gods cast against him, which is pretty bad. Yeah, that's not where you want to be. Alright. Untap the steam ends instead of tapping down a land. That's aggressive. Man, here it comes. Alright, here comes the bolt. <clears throat> this tells me he doesn't have the combo. If he has a combo, you definitely tap down a land. Abrupt decay. All right, abrupt decay targets the. See, because if he went for the combo there with both those lands up, the abrupt decay would have broken it up on him. It suspends the ancestral visions. And passes. These are all the cards in Devin's hand. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. Grim Flare and Tarmogoyf. Devin yep. needs an answer, in short order. Yeah, you can name... Pithing Needle can name fetch lands. Mm -hmm. And it prevents them from fetching. You need to fetch in response to them playing the Pithing Needle. Because you can't respond to them naming your fetch. Right. Once Pithing Needle resolves, you're out of luck. Alright. Here comes a 4-5 and a 4-4 four four in. Oh no, a 4 5 and a 2 2. Yeah, just a 2 2. Are we putting two counters on this Grim Flayer with this Jun Charm? I believe we are. Man, this is a big game right here. This would be a great opportunity for a remand. And redirecting it to Spellskite. Whew! Oh! That's a blowout. Man. That was rough. That was a rough one for Kyle. Heads up play by Devin, though, seeing the onboard trick. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no fifth land for Devin still? He's got this 2 6, though. <laughs> he does have a 2 6. If this ravine gets a counter, that's, that's big. Yep, so you have to kill Ravine on its first activation because it starts out as a 3-3. Three, three. So you have to have the lightning bolt there. So here's your opportunity to bolt. So if he doesn't have the bolt here, it's just, yep. Bad news. Because that, even though he's got a 2-6, that Ravine's going to outgrow this Spellskite in short order. Sure. And another Ravine added. Oh, wow. I don't think Devin's going to last much longer in this game. He's got four cards coming next turn if he can survive one turn. So he's at ten. <coughs> Kyle's going to tap a lot of mana here to get this ravine activated. And I suppose... So you, so you can block the five. And then you're going to take four, go to six. And then he's going to get his hand loaded up here. Four cards is a lot of cards to draw in one turn. Yep. All right, he passes. Devin's Ancestral draw. Visions draw. 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 Draw for turn. And let's see. We've got almost a full grip now. <coughs> what do we got? Tell me about it. Kyle's representing any number of removal spells with Overgrown Tomb and Blood Cleave Cliffs. Or Black Cleave Cliffs. Black Cleave Cliffs. So what Devin could get here is he could have drawn into the combo, and by passing the turn, Kyle activates the land, Devin plays either Pestermite or Exarch to tap one of the attackers, mm -hmm. hopefully the land, and... Let's see if he has something before combo here. And then here. can you spell Skite to block the other one? All right, so Ravine's a 6-6. Six, six. It can take down this Spellskite now. And that Spellskite's an integral part of going off against the Jund deck. Absolutely. Because it breaks up a lot of their removal. Well, if he has the piece, he could tap a land and then move into blocks, and Kyle has to spend the mana. Yeah, so Kyle's going to play his uh, Terminate here. 
All right. So if you have a removal spell, this is, or if you have a counter spell, this is great, because you can throw the spell skite in front of the ravine. Wow. And now you get to go off. Yep. Spell skite. Oh no. my. No, Deceiver Exarch should not be blocking here. Kyle dodging a bullet. I guess so, like, Devin doesn't see the win here. Or it, maybe Kiki Jiki's not in his hand, but I Kiki think Kiki Jiki's definitely in his hand. If he has another land and a pester might, he can still go off. Sure. Or just another like combo piece there. So untap land so he can Step one. Step one, play like a Deceiver Exarch, untap a land, cast Kiki Jiki, still go off. And it looks like he's got it. So that's yeah. the power of Ancestral Vision. Man, in he was the so twin deck. out of that game until that Ancestral Vision resolves. <clears throat> Absolutely. And Kyle's just having a blast from the past here. I'm 100% <laughs> yeah. sure nobody's attacked him with an infinite number of uh, Deceiver Exarchs in a while. Almost a year now that it's been banned. Yeah, it did. It got banned during the. Uh, the Eldrazi Pro Tour. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember the, the mono black Eldrazi that's, deck that's that dominated uh, Pro Tour. Uh, Pro Tour Eldrazi Winter. Which which Pro Tour? Which set was out? Origins? Oath of the Gatewatch. Oh, is it Pro Tour Oath of the Gatewatch? Yep. Yeah. So they printed all these Eldrazi and then they invaded Modern. And won the Pro Tour. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> no additional sideboard. Well, maybe. I do think this is a matchup, especially for Judd, where your sideboarding is very play draw dependent. Okay. Or optimal sideboarding is. Sure. But I don't know what's in Kyle's sideboard, so I don't know how many cards he can reliably take out or bring in. Is this one where you just want that <coughs> turn one discard spell? It's just yeah, the best lead ever. A turn one discard spell keeps him off of Ancestral Vision, which is very good. It gives you so many extra turns to kill him before one goes off. Right. But we saw it there where Kyle had the removal spell for the combo, but because Devin had so many cards in hand, so much card advantage, that he couldn't possibly have enough removal spells for all of it. Right. Um, yeah, and then Devin had the backup, so he just got to uh, got to soak up damage with his extra combo piece. Yeah. Very powerful. <laughs> All right, let's see if uh, Kyle on the play can mount a quicker offense. Right. To take Devin down. Yeah, maybe we can uh, we can play our Jun charms appropriately too. All right. Yeah, I'm not. All right, Kyle crazy keeps about seven. Jun charm here, but it does stop the combo, and maybe he's just short on additional cards to do so. Let's see what Devin does. All right, Devin's going to... We got sevens. Here's and the there thoughtsies. it is. Down to 15 off the bat. Nobody 16. really cares about that. He didn't fetch. Oh, he didn't fetch. <clears throat> oh, this is an interesting one. So, he's got Dispel. You can just play around Dispel. That's not a huge deal. He's got Mana Leak. You can play around that pretty easily. Right. So, not a lot of gas here. I would take the Snapcaster Mage, personally. So he's going to be... It depends on what's in Kyle's hand. I did see a Grim Flayer. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay, so if he's got a Goyf, this Snapcaster Mage is great. Because your Goyf is going to come down as a 3-4. Okay. When Devin doesn't have an answer for it. And is going to be stoned out of answers because Bolt will be not enough. Right. So now we get a fetch Goyf if he's got one. 
Yep, we got the forest coming. And there it is. Oh, Grim Flare. Okay, so <coughs> this is interesting because he knows. He knows about the Is It Charm. Devin has this Is It Charm. And so I guess what he's doing is he's opening up a Liliana line here, whereas sure. he attacks with a Grim Flare. If Devin goes to kill it, um, he gets to play Liliana, and that leans in on it. Sure. Is it Charm's an awesome card? It's got so many great modes. Oh, and Devin can't. Is it Charm it? Oh wow. Oh, did we miss that on the Thoughtseize? <laughs> is that why? Did he not have red mana? He didn't that's have any red mana. That's in, that's interesting. Yeah, we, we, we still I don't know if I can thoughtsies. bank on that. All right. So if I'm Kyle, I'm almost guaranteeing myself uh, delirium here, right? I don't think it's as important. So what Kyle's doing here is representing that he doesn't have delirium. Right. But he only needs an instant to get delirium. Okay. And he has terminate and Jun Charm in hand. <clears throat> it looks like this time he'll actually get to put the counters on his own creature if he decides to do so. I think Devin's gonna gonna be forced into a, a I would vapor snag this here. Um as you just can't keep taking it in the teeth from from the the Grim Flare. You can while it's just two. Well, not just two anymore. Now it's four. So now we're going to need to start providing some answers. Playing a Goyf out into a Mana Leak at best is questionable here. Yeah. Oh, Flash Freeze, so he still knows about... I would, uh, if I were Devin, I would order my counter spells in a different fashion. Sure. So Mana League loses value as Kyle plays more lands, so you want to burn it as early as possible. Right. Whereas Flash Freeze is always going to counter a red or a green spell. Maybe he's worried about Bolt. Bolt? Bolt. So if he has, like, a Pestermite in hand and he wants, he is going to have to lean heavily on the combo, then keeping the Flash Freeze around... To get the bolt is very important. Yeah, that's my point. Oh, well, that's a good point. You should have kept the flash leak around. All right, so vapor snag is cast at the end step here. Kyle goes to fourteen, and we untap. How uh, how bad is it? as a Jun player to draw those fast lands later in the game. Mm. On a turn like this, it's not good. It, it seems <coughs> pretty... Okay, so Devin's going to try and draw two, discard two here. So there are definitely late game turns where you have a ravine and you just need the fifth mana right. to get there and you just draw the fast land and you're like, all right, well, whatever. Yeah, we'll get there next turn. And that's not good. But there are also turns where you're like, okay, I'm going to cast, like, a Liliana and, like, a Tarmogoy if the six land is irrelevant. So we'll right, just yeah, throw it just out there. sequence them correctly. Right. I enjoy a format where, where mana sequencing is is important. Oh, sure. I think it's a, a, a nice layer of thought to add to your gameplay. Absolutely. Is it charm to draw to discard two is one of the discards was a lightning bolt. Sure. He has no fear. Well he knows that all of Kyle's creatures are out of bolt range at this point. Yeah, and Kyle did mill over <clears throat> two uh uh Bobs. Bobs. I was trying to say dark confidant, that's what I'm saying, man. Multi Bob in it. And so I guess he's no fear of Bob since uh Kyle's not shown any value in it. All right. Another draw set from Kyle here. More, more heat. So we have multiple Tarmogoyfs. I'm fine with running a Tarmogoyf out here. Like, he could mana like it if he wants. Sure. 
I don't know how many cards in Devin's hand. He's keeping it pretty hidden. Close to the vest. Tarmogoyf resolves. All right. Oh my. Relic of Progenitus is very good draw here. Yeah, does this get all the graveyards? All the graveyards. All right. This Goyf is going to become a zero one. Gets a draw card off it too. Absolutely. I like drawing a card. So this will be interesting. Yeah, I think you, you just gotta pull the trigger on it, right? Pull your trigger on it's a good call. This is where I would have kept the bolt as one of my cards from the uh the is it charm. I don't know what's in his hand, but So I think his hand is now Kiki Jiki Manalik. Okay. So Kyle's going to get a little bit, make this coif just a little bit bigger. It'll be interesting to see how Kyle follows this up. He's got a Liliana in hand, and with only two cards in hand, Liliana's going to be very good against Devin, but he knows about that mana leak. Yeah, and running it into that mana leak is pretty much unacceptable. So we'll see if he has the targeted discard, because that would be a huge turn here. Correct. He definitely went and got a mana specifically to make... Hmm. It's got a lot of removal. Terminate, Abrupt Decay, Liliana, Jun Charm. And uh, one card I didn't see. Uh, terminate, Jun Charm, Liliana, Abrupt Decay. I think he's just got those four. Alright. Alright, so the Mana Leak has been fired off. Coast is clear for Lily if he wants it. <clears throat> right. But he can't put shields down unless Devin plays a land here. Any two cards could be the combo. Right. And this was the hard part about playing against this when it was just Splinter Twin. Sure. Is that it was just so hard to... So one of the cards in his hand is a land... It's just so hard to decide when... See, I would have kept the land this time because he's got the tower? Or the uh, desolate lighthouse? I think he had the lighthouse last game, too. Or maybe that was game one. Um, but yeah, <coughs> I mean, I, it's somebody's trying to find the combo, I want to be rolling through it here. Sure. Just lighthousing at the end of every turn. Alright. Kyle's going to get him for three. You'll notice that their life totals are even here before the attack, <laughs> and uh, Devin has not attacked once. <laughs> Absolutely. This Jun deck just... Oh my, are we firing up this fumeral? Sure. That is aggressive. Man. I would terminate this funeral, fumeral here. I would have a fumeral funeral. Ha ha. How do you guys like that one? The fumeral funeral. Was hilarious. Super funny. So he still has abrupt decay to break up the combo. But with if fewer lands in hand, or fewer lands on the battlefield, this uh, combo is going to be very pinched. You saw the flexibility of being able to go off all in one turn, not having to wait or do anything in a turn. Right. Yeah, so hitting that, hitting that like eight mana. Uh, seven is the magic number. Sure. And we're back up to it. Okay, so Kyle's deciding not to activate the raging ravine here. Instead, he's going to commit more to the board. Man. 
man. Activate Desolate Lighthouse. Drawing. I'm gonna see a discard of something here. A land. Discarding a land. Um. Yeah, I don't man. know. It's Snapcaster Mage. Is the card in, pl in hand? Liliana Plus here is very strong. Oh yeah, I think that's what what we're gonna see on Kyle's end. You still get to represent any removal spell with your two mana. Yep. So the mana leak was, was spent, so we're just... Liliana, plus... Goodbye, Goyf. You're redundant. Snapcaster hits the yard. Yep. And so Kyle has Jun Charm in hand, and he can end the game next turn. He can end if, the game in a number of ways next turn. I don't know if I like... Actually going for any of them? Right. Unless one of them is just a bolt. Sure. Or yeah, unless, like, the, Devin does something silly like tapping out here. Yeah, for the low, low price of one mana, it's pretty hard not to just try it. Sure. But anything else is going to put him into range where, like, a remand is just going to blow him out. Sure. Um, Devin's giving it a good hard think here. He's got Kiki Jiki in hand. I'm gonna activate the lighthouse. Man, this is. Yep, discards the ancestral visions. Yeah, way too late for that one. Yep. You see the difference in this match with ancestral visions and without the ancestral visions? Yep, card's important. Anger down. Kyle's going to go, go for, for it. it. So he can get remanded or mana leaked here and it's still fine. Or vapor snagged. Vapor snag. That'll do it. Man, so we finally got a good one in where we had some interaction back and forth. Yeah, a nice long match. Uh, blast from the past, Jun versus the Splinter Twin deck without Splinter Twin. Right. Kiki Twin. Yep. Well... I don't know about you, I'm ready to sign it off and come back tomorrow night at 6.30 for some standard action. Absolutely, but for our viewers that are just here for the modern action, we're going to have some more modern action on Saturday. Does that start at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time? 1.30 Eastern Standard Time. Why do they keep starting these tournaments at 1.30? I don't know, it's any weird. Sense. Yeah, I want to start I think at like 11. Do, oh, that would be amazing. But I think they're going to do 1.30 and then, like, do the players meeting and then fire the first round off at 2. Sure. So, it makes sense. But if you're here...